It's time now to check your money with America's money maven, Vicki Brackens. Vicki Brackens is the president of Brackens Financial Solutions Network, LLC, and a registered representative of LPL Financial, member SIPC. Good morning. Buenos dias, Vicki Brackens. Bien, y tú? So what happened? You did what happened, Vicky? Oh, I'm doing great, George. Okay, I'm, I've had a good week. Um, we've had up and down weather, but say uh, for for Syracuse, okay, it, it, it's not too bad. But most of all, I think that um, we can all say that we have been um, exceedingly blessed for this week. Um, I, I stopped and I thought about, you know, what are we going to discuss this week? Because we all, we're always thinking about new topics and things of that nature. And I, it dawned on me, guess what this week is? This it's would be, week. this would be normally tax week. Yes. Okay. This would normally be tax week. So rather than talking about tax prote- uh, preparation, which we, we've done some segments on that, I thought it might be a little interesting for us to actually talk about why. Why do we pay taxes and how did this system all come about? What's the history really around the tax system itself? Um, And as you probably know, and most people who are listening know that if you think about it, taxes are really, since 1950, individual income taxes have been the primary source for revenue for the U.S. government. That is where the money comes from. But it's such an interesting topic, and there's so many juicy details. And I'm going to read a short segment for you. So just kind of sit back and absorb, and then we'll have a discussion about it at the end. So since 1950, individual income taxes have been the primary source of revenue for the federal government. Together with payroll taxes, uh, which are used primarily for your Social Security and Medicare, income taxes make up roughly 80% of all the federal revenue and are the fuel for how the government runs. Now, the history of income taxes in the United States goes back to the Civil War. Mm -hmm. When Abraham Lincoln signed into law, the nation's first ever tax on personal income, and that was really being used to um, take care of the war efforts. After it was repealed a decade later, Congress tried to reinstate it again in 1894, enacting something called the flat rate federal income tax. But the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that it was unconstitutional because it didn't take into account the population of each state. Mm -hmm. And then in 1909, Congress passed, here's one of those amendments again, passed the 16th Amendment, which allowed the federal government to tax individual personal income regardless of the state's population. Required number of states um, ratified this in 1913, and America has been required to pay federal income taxes ever since. By law, though, any American who has a gross income of over $10,000 or $25,000 for married couples of filing jointly or who earned more than $400 as far as self-employment must file for a federal income tax return. There are a number of circumstances that may require you to, to file in different forms, we're not really going to go into those, but basically, if you've earned ten thousand dollars as an individual, twenty-five thousand as a couple, or four hundred dollars as self-employment, you are subject to the to the income tax rules. Um, by the way, in Puerto Rico, which uh, is a U.S. territory, residents aren't required to pay federal income tax if their only income comes from Puerto Rico, but they do pay Social Security and they have uh, Social Security and Medicare taxes. And they do have uh, an import exported commodity taxes, which really account for about $3 billion a year in tax payments that they have. So there's lots of things around how taxes are calculated and the top rates. But one of the things you should remember is that, and I'm talking about tax rates, because there's conversations right now about, well, we have to fund the stimulus. You know, we talked about the stimulus last week. Right, right. Now we have to fund the stimulus and tax rates are going to go up. Well, the top rate of all time was in 1913. And that was, excuse me, the bottom rate of all time was in 1913. And that was around 7%. But the top rate being in 1960, which was 
one percent. Wow. Ninety-one percent was the top rate. But you have to realize that we have what's called a graduated tax rate. And so it's not that all dollars are taxed at that rate. As you go up the scale, there's a certain percentage of the dollars uh, as far as the marginal tax rate system that is taxed at that top rate of 91%. Um, for individuals, though, who are in the, in the, in the highest tax bracket, uh, I'm sure there's some concern with the fact that we're talking about raising taxes again, but we actually happen to be in one of the lower tax positions that we've been in for a long, long period of time. So why do I care and want to really spend some time on why do we pay taxes? Yeah, why do we want to spend some time on what does that have to do with me? Because most of us, which is interesting, right? Because most of us want to reduce our tax rate by any means necessary, but we do have to pay taxes for a reason. And, and certainly, like you said, uh, if this, this infrastructure bill goes through, uh, there will be some taxes for some folks okay. that make a lot of money. So, now, so let's stop and then go back to the very thing, uh, first thing I said. Since 1950, individual income taxes have been the primary source of revenue for the U.S. federal government. They don't just sit around and hold that money and say, okay, fine, we're gonna sit in here. I do recall that there are many bills, projects, things that have to be done, roads that have to be built, schools that have to be funded, military that has to be funded, um, research that has to be done. We want the government to do this, that, this, and the other, takes revenue. Now, I don't necessarily nor to say that everything that they approve or everything that, uh, as far as the way things is, uh, are, are, are uh, partitioned out across the country are necessarily exactly what the way I would do it. But the bottom line is, if we continually look to our federal government, state government, municipal governments for services, their services require revenue. Here's what I want you to do though. Get more involved in understanding for yourself what the bills and the uh, tax levies are being used for. Don't just rely on what we read in snippets mm -hmm. or what we hear from others. Because it's kind of like, remember that game we used to play in, in school, George, where the teacher would stand at the front of the room and whisper something into one person's ear, right. and then you whispered it to somebody else and, and that message was supposed to come back around. Yeah, the telephone, teacher, I think, was that game. Is it was a phone game. And by telephone. the time it got back to the to the to the original source, it was a totally different. Right. Totally different. Okay. Do the research yourself. Really make sure that you understand not just what's being being told to you, but what the meat of the subject matter is around how your tax revenues are being spent. Make sure also though, while I've got you. Okay, May 17th is the new date for filing. That's right. Okay, rather than the April 15th. But if you got it in early and you got it in before April 15th, wonderful, sit back and relax. But May 17th is the cutoff this year to get out to your tax preparer or, or if you do it yourself in TurboTax or online, in some online system. Um, and by the way, if you have issues uh, and needs tax preparation done, but you don't necessarily have to have the revenue or have the money to pay a preparer, Go see the United Way. United, United Way, Way is helping people with that? Yes. United Way has set up special uh, systems to help uh, with um, preparation for taxes mm -hmm. on a reduced or no-cost basis. Mm -hmm. Well, George, that was a lot about why we pay taxes. Um, again, okay, if, you, if you have additional questions, feel free to give me a call. Area code 315-930-4499 or reach out to us at info at brackensfsn.com. Of course, follow us on Facebook, like us on YouTube. And at this point in time, I'll say, George, our plate is full. All right, Vicki Brackens is the president of Brackens Financial Solutions Network, LLC, and a registered representative of LPL Financial Member, SIPC. She is America's Money Maven. 